who's got the best hands in the UFC? An easy choice would be Max Holloway, Volkanovski, maybe Dustin Poirier, or maybe it's our boy Taporia. But what if I told you that there's a guy on the come up with some of the most crisp boxing the UFC has ever seen? A broken nosed Australian with brilliant striking, power in both hands, and some of the nastiest body shots in the game. Strangle Gang, let me introduce you to Jack Della Maddalena. Ben Vickers there in West Virginia. Oh! 11 in a row for Jack Della Maddalena. This is what he goes, Della Maddalena, Rick Bob the Day. So look at right, that. Just a little bit more head and torso movement as he closes. Beautiful by Jack to roll through. Swarming. Look at the body. Work. Body head. Della Maddalena oh. empty in the tank here. Much like fellow Aussie Alexander Volkanovsky, Jack Della Maddalena grew up playing rugby league. He joined a boxing gym in hopes of improving his fitness and soon fell in love with the sport of MMA. At the age of 19, he made his pro debut for eternal MMA against Alden Bates. Della displayed some grappling skills, but his inexperience showed as well. He gassed out in the third and lost the contest via TKO. In his next fight, Jack lost again, this time getting caught in a rear naked choke by Darcy Vendy. Yeah, he got it. Well done. His career had gotten off to a shaky start with consecutive losses. Psychologically, coming back from two losses is incredibly challenging. Most people don't understand that. It's hard enough to lose once when in your mind you've been telling yourself that you're the best. You've been talking to yourself in the mirror. You've been telling your girlfriend, I got what it takes, baby, I'm gonna make it in the UFC. So this is a testament to Magdalena's mental fortitude to be able to come back and go on the run he was about to go on. From this point on, something seemed to click in the young Aussie. A fire was lit. He shook off the losses and was back in the cage mere months later. Jack cruised through the first round with crisp striking before catching his opponent's leg and sleeping him with a vicious elbow. Yes. Oh, oh, he's out. It's all over. His next fight was against Glenn Pettigrew. Again, Jack finished his opponent in one round with a nasty combo. Oh, that is a huge head kick and he follows up with strikes. Jack can sense that he's got him in trouble here. Pettigrew's in trouble, he's trying to get out of there and he's down. Jack Della's pounding it out and we've got a new... He then did the same thing to Ty Duncan. Now we see him in the open guard position. That's a South 4 versus an Orthodox. As he's turning it on, the body shot, watch him. He's coming in, he's looking for the finish. That's over. And it's all over. Della hits him with a body shot that drops him. And, and earned his first submission against James Duckett. Mark Goddard taking a close look and there's the submission! Not allowing his initial losing skid to discourage him, Jack had taken back the momentum of his career. Della's next fight would be for the eternal MMA welterweight belt. In the first round, Jack demonstrated his tight boxing and effective bodywork. Jabbing, getting the range, good left, right hand, and again. Oh, a nice body shot. In the second, he left his opponent stiff as a board. Luke is tough, man. Nice oh, body shot big shot. Oh! oh. Oh! He's out. He's, He's out, out cold. In his first title defense, the newly crowned champ got clipped hard with a head kick. But demonstrated his grit, bouncing back and finishing the challenger with ground and pound. Big shot! It could be over! It's over! Jack by TKO! One of Della's early victims, Glenn Pettigrew, had since gone on an impressive streak earning a title shot. Pettigrew did better this time, but it was only a matter of time before Della found the opening. A massive body shot sent Glenn down and Jack poured on strikes. With wounded prey in front of him, Jack ripped another one straight to the gut, and that was all she wrote. With his last fight in Eternal, Della faced Alden Bates, the man who had handed him his first loss. Go, Jack! A 
last spot in the UFC. That is insane, Jack Della, with the greatest performance of his career. With a slick and spectacular knockout, Jack earned his revenge and ended his time on the local scene with a statement. After departing from Eternal, the Aussie was offered a spot on Dana White's Contender Series against Angelusa. This is where the world learned about Jack Della Maddalena. Wild, all that good stuff. You know, we're talking about Arnge. Habit of work in the body. That was oh, a massive shot. shot. Left hand. But it, it's the full way this lights. We talked about Volkanovski. See, look at that, though. It's so crisp. Hurting oh. with that left. Oh, that he's getting up. Oh. Nice body shot. Oh. He felt that one. And then it comes with an uppercut with the same hand. Just beautiful work. Oh. Oh. See, look at right that. To the a little bit more head and torso movement as he closes distance because right now Jack beautiful by Jack to roll through, get back to his feet, and this nice. is exactly what he wants to finish this fight there with. We go. Oh my goodness. Oh, that two wow. big shots. Nice. Fight needs to finish. With crisp shots, shifting angles, and constant aggression, Jack dominated Lusa, earning a clear decision win and a UFC contract from Dana White. Having officially earned his spot in the UFC, Jack made his debut for the promotion in a sold-out arena at UFC 270. And it's safe to say, the nerves did not get to him. Yeah, he's a compact puncher, a little undersized for the division. He's transitioning to better fighting stance. Oh my goodness! Big left-hand connection by Della Maddalena. He's under Ben Vickers there in Western oh. Australia. Oh. Oh. That's it. That's the fight. Yeah. With a step back, counter cross, Della dispatched of Rodriguez three minutes into the first round. In his next fight, Jack was given the dreaded test that most UFC fighters eventually have to face. He was set to face a Dagestani. Della came out more cautious than usual, trying to anticipate the grappling. Emeyev scored an early takedown, but the Aussie showed awareness and stood himself back up. However, Emeyev locked up an anaconda, dragging Jack back to the ground and managing to roll him over into a tight choke. For a second, it looked like Jack was in real trouble, but with one swift motion, he managed to slip out and get back to his feet. Immediately, Della began to put pressure on a tired Emeyev, backing him to the fence. Soon, he found the opening and lunged in with a furious combo, melting the Dagestan with heavy bodywork and finishing him off in cutthroat fashion. JDM was gaining some serious steam as a UFC prospect, and his next fight was against Englishman Danny Roberts, who didn't quite buy into the hype. Like, who are you, bro? You've got two fights in the UFC, like, whatever. Well, Jack would make Danny eat his words. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Though a boxer himself, Robert just could not keep up with the Aussie. An early knockdown sent Roberts into panic mode. And though he survived another two minutes, it was only a matter of time before a signature Madalena body shot turned Roberts into a stationary target. Three for three. First round knockouts. Perth has got one. Oh, yeah. In He's Jack Della Madalena. He'll be on the Perth card. In one of his most recent fights, Della had the opportunity to perform in his hometown of Perth, Australia at UFC 284. Jack's opponent was the ever confident Randy Brown. I'm gonna put that nose back on the other side of his face. The long and rangy Brown came out with slick footwork and head movement, but Jack simply walked him down like the Terminator, pressing him against the cage and throwing bombs. He caught Randy with a big hook and sent him barreling down to the mat. Jack proceeded to rain down ground and pound, and when there was an opening, took Brown's back and cinched in the rear naked choke, earning his first UFC submission win in front of a roaring hometown crowd. Jack has been on my radar for a little while now. I love the way he uses boxing, the way he uses his jab, the way he goes to the body, but always remembers to finish to the head. Now, when you go to the body on somebody and you finish up to the head, you're forcing your opponent to bring his hands back up. That makes it very hard for him to counter you. Some of the old school guys in MMA used to finish to the body, I ain't gonna say no names, Chuck Liddell, and get caught with counters and uh, things wouldn't go their way because of that. My only question with Jack is how good is his grappling? All right, so we're a few days removed from JDM's last fight and everyone on the internet is getting on my man. They're saying that he's not who we thought he was. 
he's all hype, whatever the case may be. So let's break down constructively what JDM can do to improve from this last fight. When you go for these front headlock positions, falling for guillotines is low IQ, unless you're high, high level with a high elbow and a high wrist. So it's just not the smartest thing to do. What you should do is blend in the thread of the strangle and the front choke and use that defensive reaction from your opponent to then go behind. And that gives you the ability to land effective strikes from behind the guy where he can't see you. Going for a guillotine over and over again, expecting a different result is just not a good idea. And again, not to reiterate it, not to kick the guy when he's sort of down, but it's just not high fight IQ. You're going for a guillotine. It didn't work the first time. Your opponent had a 100% pass rate. 100% pass rate. That's not good. Now, this worries me. I think to myself, how is he going to deal with a guy like Chemaev? How is he going to deal with a guy like Shavkat? How is he going to deal with a guy like Brady? These are all really tough grapplers that are going to test you, man. And if you can't frame on bottom and you're pulling guard with guillotines, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Listen, with all that being said and all that constructive criticism, I got a lot of respect for JD. I mean, he had a lot of pressure going into the fight. He fought a really tough guy that he didn't really know was, you know, how much he was going to show up, what kind of guy was going to show up. And I don't think he ever got discouraged. He, he was hitting hard. He always was going for the finish. I have tremendous respect for both guys. And let him live, man. Listen, he's learning on the job. You know, fighting is a very difficult thing. Sometimes you can do amazing things in training, but once those hot lights are on you, you make bad decisions. No one's perfect. Now, for me, who do I want to see him match up with next? I think him and Jeff Neal would make a great fight. Two guys with incredibly crisp boxing, really good understanding of distance and timing. I would love to see it. Word around the street is that you want to improve your fight IQ. If that's the case, then click the link below. Free newsletter. Drop to your email every single week. And it's really just designed to make you a better fighter and a better man to really evolve your habits as well. Because people don't realize that habits and the way that you conduct your life are congruent with your fighting ability. They're mutually exclusive. So click the link below. Strangle Gang, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, stay strong, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Bilal, no one wants to see him fight.